Uh, we're here today with uh, Brother Jihad Muhammad, a community activist locally in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Also, is the, the, the local representative for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Brother Jihad, you and Reverend Butlock, y'all going to be hosting an event uh, titled Accept the Responsibility to Rebuild Our Community. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about what the uh, event is going to be about? Well, you know, we're going to have a, basically it's a community forum uh, that's going to actually be uh, at his church, uh, Grace Evangelical Church, located at 4210 Ohio Street on September the 23rd from the hour of 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, the program actually will entail a panel that will address the issues that are affecting our community, affecting us as a people, um, in terms of, 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 of a limited health care, limited uh, treatment in our city, inadequate education. Uh, some of the issues that are going on in our community, we feel that black people can come together in this city uh, with the mind and resources that we have and begin solving uh, some of the problems that our people are afflicted with. Have an event of some of this nature uh, ever occurred before? You know, there have been uh, many uh, community forums throughout Pine Bluff over the years, over the several years I've been working in the city. I think the difference between this one uh, and the ones that have taken place uh, is that there has always been a lack of follow-up. There has always been a lack of participation all the way across the board. Uh, if you can recall a few years ago, uh, Reverend Johnny Smith of a shallow missionary Baptist church did a 10,000-man conference. Uh, I was uh, blessed to sign on and to help the brother with the conference. And there were two things as I worked with him that stuck out in my mind uh, that almost dampened and kept the event from being uh, successful as it, as it could have been. Uh, number one, he called all men to come together. And there were black male leaders in this city that came, signed on, and made certain commitments. But when it came time to fulfill those commitments, those leaders were nowhere to be found. Those who showed up, showed up, spoke, didn't bring any young people with them, didn't bring anybody uh, who, to inspire with them. And so we want this one to be somewhat different in that we want to do follow-up sessions. And we want black people in this city who are in leadership position to really be committed to helping our people and understand that we have the mind among us, we have the spirit among us, we have the resources among us to solve our own problems. We're just like a hand. Everybody's apart doing their own thing. And what we intend to do is bring all the organizations, all the leaders together to be the powerful force that we can and should be to answer the challenges in our own community. Why do you feel is a need at this present time um, to do an event of such a nature? Well, I would say if you look at uh, this past week, KTN just did uh, an interview with two uh, Caucasian gentlemen, and they discussed the death rate of African Americans in Arkansas as compared to European Americans in Arkansas. They found out that the African American death rate in our state is much more higher than white people. As they talked about this particular study, they said that they traced the root of the study down and it led to a lack of education and it led to poverty. Education and poverty are connected together, but from these two, other issues come in terms of low self-esteem, uh, other issues come in terms of addiction, uh, mass incarceration. If you don't have the education you need, you can't get the job you need. If you don't have the job you need, then you get involved in criminal behavior in order to meet your basic needs. That leads to criminalization. That leads to incarceration. We even have the issue where after brothers, are, uh, brothers and sisters are incarcerated, 
making the transition back to society where they become integrated in society as productive members of society. There's a challenge to do that. So we have all of these issues raging at the same time. Uh, when, you have, when you don't have money, you're forced to live in bad housing conditions. That can be changed. We have over 400 churches in our community. What would happen if 100 of those churches decided that we're going to organize together? We're going to put, develop an institution where we're able to, all of those 100 churches or 400 churches are able to put $100 a month in a particular bank. That's $400,000 going into a particular bank in this city. What type of economic capital would that leverage for those churches as a unit? We can build homes. We can build facilities for children who are being molested and have no place to go. We can build places for people who are homeless and who want to do better, but they can't get a job because they don't have a place to stay. They can't get their life on track because they don't have a place to stay. We can begin to be that force to actually meet the needs of people who are suffering, just like Jesus said in the scripture that he, he knows you not on his return. Why? Because he was hungry. You didn't feed him. He was locked up in prison. You didn't come and visit him. He was sick and in bed and you didn't uh, minister unto him. We could actually become the force to meet the needs of the people on a real massive level. It's going on now, but it's going on in a really limited way. None of us as individual leaders of the community are in a position to invite drug addicts, dope fiends, robbers, rapists, and murderers into our personal home. But some of these people are getting on the right track and they need our assistance. So it's our challenge to come together as a unit and put our heads together to meet the needs of these people who are suffering and want to do better. Yes, sir. So what are your, your primary goals as far as this event? And what are you asking the citizens, the people at this present time? You know, I'm asking people to come out uh, in support of the event because all of us have somebody, all of us know somebody who is struggling in this city. I'm asking those in leadership to sign on and to really become a part of the efforts in terms of the follow-up sessions where we all sit around the round table and everybody will bring their uh, specific expertise to the table. The person who has a background in dealing with those who have been involved in crime those who understand spiritual principles, those who understand uh, the law and what, uh, we, what can be brought to the ter table in terms of local, state, and federal resources. Everybody must come to the table because everybody has a piece of the puzzle of solving the problem. If we could get everybody to the table and let everybody work in their particular area of specialty, and we use each other's resources and each other's knowledge, we could come up with a manual that addresses specific issues that we're dealing with in this city. That manual can be put in the hands of those who are in leadership as a frame of reference and as a blueprint for us solving the problems collectively. So while there has been some disagreement among leadership that has kept leadership divided, this is an opportunity, this is a method for all of us to set our petty differences aside. Really focus on uh, meeting the needs of these people. So we're inviting everybody to come out and be a part of the process. Too often when people do events like this, or programs like this, there's a bunch of lecturing going on where the leadership is talking uh, not to the people but at the people. So there's going to be a small amount of that. Uh, those who will speak will have the opportunity to do small, short presentations. And then there will be a long presentation, of course, by the keynote speaker. But then there will be uh, an open, uh, open floor for dialogue between the leadership that is speaking and those who are attending. So there's going to be a, an, t an intense, interactive question and answer period where people will get an understanding of what it's going to take 
to really solve the problem. So everybody who's in the audience will have the opportunity to ask critical, critical questions uh, that's a concern for them. And then those who are on the panel who are experts in their field uh, who have been working, they will have the opportunity to ask, answer those questions. Okay. Uh, let me ask this question. Who is Brother Nuri, Student Minister Nuri Muhammad, and why are, we, uh, why are you asking a uh, minister from another state to come here locally to assist you in this uh, forum? Well, there was a, a request put up um, to have Minister Nuri uh, in the state because Minister Nuri has a history coming up as a young man, 17 years old, and joining the Nation of Islam, and going to Chicago, uh, working the orientation class at the Nation of Islam. He has a history of working with community leaders throughout the country to help uh, communities solve problems. He's not a local fellow. He's known throughout the country and throughout the world. He is the man who is responsible for using the guidance of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under Minister Farrakhan. He built what they called in Indianapolis, Indiana, the miracle on 38th Street, which is not only a mosque, but is a whole shopping center built by black people that employs black people. And black people are able to go there uh, I think there's a barber shop and beauty salon. There's a school actually there. And you know how important that is with our people graduating, uh, being functioning and So it's very important. He has did certain things in his city that no leader has did in this city. So we essentially want to bring him to be a source of inspiration. Let me ask you this question. Can you give us a, a brief history of who student minister Nuri Muhammad is and why are you bringing or asking a minister from another state to come in and assist you in this forum? Well, you know, if you go and research uh, Minister Nuri, you find out that Minister Nuri was a young man uh, who was not doing well in school. He joined the Nation of Islam at the age of 17. And his grades went from D's to F's immediately to A's. And from that position, he launched himself out in terms of becoming a student of Minister Farrakhan and understanding the condition of our people. Minister Nuri uh, is known not just in the city, but throughout the country, and he's be becoming known throughout the world as a spiritual leader, spiritual advisor, a teacher, and really a community leader in terms of his ability to bring uh, leaders, leadership together and organize uh, to meet the needs of that particular community. He is the uh, minister who is known uh, as uh, the man who established the miracle on 38th Street in Indianapolis, Indiana, which is actually a mosque, a uh, school, and you know how important it is for us to have our independent school because the public school system is not producing uh, what we would like to see. Uh, most, a lot of people in the black community that are graduating uh, from school functioning illiterate, uh, not even able to meet ba their basic needs coming out of school. Uh, a beauty shop, uh, uh, a restaurant, and I believe uh, a barber shop. So he has actually built a strip mall that employs black people that's there uh, to meet black people's needs. We here in Pine Bluff, we need something. We need leadership that will build institutions for us to meet our needs. And so who better than one who has already established a good track record of being able to not only bring people together from diverse backgrounds, but who is able to build institutions uh, that serves our people in a real good quality way. Who's better to bring than a man such as him? Okay, well, you have it. This is Pine Bluff News. Uh, Brother Jihad, I want to thank you. Well, 
Can you tell the, the people again where the event is going to be held and what time? The event will be held at uh, Grace Evangelical Church located at 4210 Ohio Street. Uh, it's going to be uh, held September the 23rd. We're going to start promptly at 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, we'll go from 4 o'clock p.m. to about uh, 6.30. And then at 6.30, we're going to break off and there's certain, uh, uh, with the leadership, uh, to have a table talk, uh, a dinner table talk, where other leaders who haven't had a chance to speak will get a chance to give some input uh, around, around, around dinner. Uh, those plates are going for $15 to help offset the cost of doing the event. Uh, but I guarantee you that it will be food from heaven. Can anyone participate in a leadership conference? Now, it, anyone can participate in a leadership conference. Uh, we only ask that you uh, bring your mind and be willing to help uh, strategize to, to solve the problems of our people.